I do not own Star Trek, or any of the related characters. Star Trek, is a mark owned by Paramount. This story is a work of fanfiction and is for entertainment only. I am not making profit from this story. This is a tribute. All rights of Star Trek belong to Paramount. This fanfiction takes place between the second and third movies of the Kelvinverse. Star Trek Reloaded. Chapter 11 Bis. Waves. Seconds passed. I don't understand, nothing seems to happen. Ahura's words fell like boulders onto the bridge. Something didn't work. 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 Kirk had the curious sensation of hearing his own echo, only to realize that was abandoning himself. For a moment thought to be dead. He was amazed that an afterlife really existed but, immediately, realized that things were going differently. As if reflected in a hundred mirrors, Kirk saw images of himself and others, of the bridge, of the ship, and of the sun, multiplied countless times, receding from each other. Hesitantly at first, then faster and faster. Initially identical, then increasingly different. What is going on? Spock. It's an epiphany, Jim, a dimensional epiphany. The young first officer's eyes were terrified and fascinated. Suddenly, a sun imploded, disappearing into thin space. Next to it, ethereal, another moved away intact, until it disappeared, and then another, yet another. Mirror Mirror Kirk didn't start breathing again until several seconds later. Everyone remained speechless in their seats. The multiplication, or whatever it was, seemed finished. Everything was what it should have been. Except the dark. The deep darkness that the monitor showed. The sun had disappeared. We did it, Captain, we did it. Kirk listened to the displays of enthusiasm on the bridge. There were smiles and handshakes, but no one seemed certain of what had happened, him first. Captain, I would recommend abandoning the system, or what's left of it, and heading away from Romulan space. Ambassador, you don't seem very satisfied. Jim. Maybe we failed, or not, I really don't know after what I saw. Kirk looked at the elderly Vulcan and was about to reply, but Dr. McCoy intervened. He's right, shouldn't we be missing too? The future we know no longer exists, because that sun did not explode destroying Romulus and therefore Nero never went back in time. The ambassador shook his head strongly. No, Leonard, that's not the point. Due to the concept of cause and effect, we could not disappear. If we had never existed we wouldn't have been able to go back and change the course of history, so. So my head already hurts. Dear doctor, I have heard this phrase a thousand times when talking about time and its paradoxes. I confess that it is difficult for me to say this but logic, at least the one we can conceive as such, quickly gives way to the apparently absurd in these cases. McCoy nodded and didn't have to say anything else. Mora Mirror Chekhov nervously reported the sensor data. The solar core shows inexplicable instabilities. The implosion system apparently didn't work, or... It worked, in its own way. The elderly ambassador looked at the system's sun on the large monitor on the bridge. As we feared, the metaphase system somehow interfered with the artificial black hole. Spock, what went wrong? Captain, we have created a latent singularity in this star. A time bomb which, in a couple of centuries I imagine, will make the sun explode in an unpredictable and bizarre way, perhaps with waves of destruction reaching Romulus at warp. Do you mean, do you mean that we created the event we wanted to avoid? Spock was silent. Mirror Mirror While the Kobayashi Maru moved away from the system, vainly pursued by the obsolete Romulan ships, Kirk studied the data of the star they were leaving behind. Spock, where did we go wrong? Why does that sun appear to be absolutely intact? The young first officer chatted softly with his elderly alter ego. He interrupted the conversation and replied to his captain. Jim, actually our action seems to have had no outcome. Mirror Mirror 
Our action had no effect. At least not in this dimension. The ambassador spoke, keeping his eyes closed and his fingers intertwined. But it has had too many effects. Jim rubbed his forehead with one hand. Spock, what did you mean by epiphany? The first officer looked Kirk in the eyes. Not B's device and the monstrous power of a star have, somehow, created a breakwater, so to speak. It's a good analogy, Spock. The ambassador took on a pleased look. A breakwater on which the time wave hit, dividing into many other distinct waves. Captain Notby, ignored by everyone, had reached the Vulcans and sat down near them. So, we didn't change time, we just created other dimensions. Maybe we only glimpsed them, but they were still there, regardless of our actions. Seems to me that there are far too many, maybes, maybes and who knows, in your reasoning, Spock. The doctor was quite serious as he addressed the first officer. I only know that there is a star there that seems to not have given a damn about the our action. Mirror. Mirror. If I understand correctly that sun is about to explode. Leonard, we are moving away to warp 6. We are in no danger. Really, Jim? I wouldn't be so sure, Captain. Said the Spock of the future. We can't know. The star exploded. Expanding to warp 9, the Kobayashi vaporized, along with all the Romulan ships. The total destruction involved four solar systems, including the one that housed the Empire's capital, Romulus. Mirror Mirror Kirk stared into Notby's eyes and seemed to be holding back the desire to punch him. Mirror Mirror The sun exploded, becoming a nova. The entire system was slowly consumed by the massive fireball, along with dozens of Romulan warships. The Kobayashi, in warp, was already far away. Mirror Mirror Young Spock argued furiously with McCoy. Mirror Mirror The Kobayashi was heading quickly towards home, leaving behind an abandoned and frozen system with the planets that were leaving, erratically, the orbit of a now imploded sun. Mirror Mirror Damaged by a thermonuclear explosion, unable to reach warp, the Kobayashi found itself at the mercy of Romulan ships. In the background, the proud sun of the 74GD system, intact, seemed to strongly display the pride of an expanding empire. Shields at 18%, sir. Sulu had time to say, before being fatally hit by the explosion of his console. Flames and smoke rose everywhere. Kirk desperately piloted the phasers, increasingly weak and ineffective. The elderly Vulcan ambassador lay on the ground, in a pool of greenish blood. It's a real shame that the Kobayashi Maru does not foresee any possibility of success. Kirk said, smiling, at his first officer. Mirror, mirror.